And in the radio drama of those days, did you all work around one mic or mm -hmm. were there multiple mics? No, we worked around one mic, fading in and out. And when I did Barclay Square, Homer said to me, you got to hold your hand on Rex Harrison because he acts like this, <laughs> meaning right. he'll be going in and out, fading in and out. I don't know what we can do. And I said, but if I hold my hand on him so he doesn't move, at least not in, even if he may move back, uh, how, what am I going to do with my script? And they said, well, we'll have somebody turning pages for your script, but you hold on. In your love scenes, you've got to hold on to him. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> What's it like to do a love scene on radio? Well, just the same as in the theater, only you don't physically kiss or, right. or hold on, but the uh, feeling is the same, and it's wonderful. I think, uh, I still think that uh, uh, doing theater on radio is the most imaginative performing. And why do you say that? It's just because uh, we used to say, all we have are the, the lines and the animal noises that we make, which was the, the, the noises that you make to uh, fill in between the lines. I remember uh, there was a wonderful series uh, uh, on radio in New York, and I did a lot of work for a particular writer and director. And one day I came, I'd been gotten a job on this, and I looked and I, I looked and I read the script and I couldn't figure out who I was. And the director said, you're the flame. I said, I'm the flame? How am I going to, there were no lines. <laughs> there was a flame that was coming in and out and, and so I, I just had to use animal noises that I thought would be like a flame. Which sounded like? Which uh, sounded like uh, I'd have to have the script. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, <coughs> no, radio uh, uh, drama is, uh, was, I don't think there's any of it on anymore. CBC does some. Some. I don't but know if NPR does any. But when I went from YPT to radio drama at the CBC, it was with the understanding that they would give me three more hours right. on air and one million dollars more into the budget. Because without airtime or money, there was yeah. nothing you could do. Yeah. No, they were very good, and uh, I loved it there. There is the, the Marshall McLuhan point of view, which I think really is saying what you're saying, that radio is a hot medium because yeah. you are required to imagine far more as an audience yeah. member. And television is a cold medium because your imagination is taken away from you by the literalness of what appears on the screen. So, no, I totally it's true. agree. Yeah. The, the animal sound of the performer is something that's yeah. visceral and of the flesh, yeah. whereas the kind of literal visuals yeah. that we're getting now are dampen your imagination. Well, I remember yeah. one did uh, on CBC Songs of My People, which was a wonderful radio show from different lands and different uh, songs of different uh, countries and uh, languages and so on. And then after 10 years, uh, uh, they wanted to try it on TV, and it was a big flop. And they asked Jan, why was it a flop? And he said, well, because on radio, I could bring people back into their homelands with their mountains and their brooks or whatever, and they could imagine it. On TV, there it was, and it was boring, and it wasn't the same as what the people watching remembered. So it yeah. lost. Uh, yep. Now, radio is wonderful. Uh, um, when I left uh, CBC Radio in 1986, after I was there for six years, it was mostly because they wouldn't give me more airtime and they wouldn't give me more money, so there was no point. I would have had to take something that I had on air that I thought was good off 
to put something new in, and it didn't make any sense. Right. To going back to New York and your radio career there, how do you audition for radio? You said you did 109 auditions. Well, because every soap opera, every show has uh, auditions for new talent. So you have your audition piece that you do? Yeah. So it's, you don't get a side of the show? No. And what was your audition piece? Oh, I had a lot of little pieces. I can't remember what they were. So you but they were, they were pieces where I played a, a boy, and they were pieces where I played a girl, and they were pieces that were funny, and they were pieces that were sad. And so, so you, you were allowed five minutes. You could do whatever you wanted. You had five minutes. So I would take little bits and pieces from different uh, plays. And would you audition in a room like this, or would you audition no, on mic? No, you auditioned in a radio studio. On mic? Mm -hmm. And they would be... Uh, and they're in the, in the control room. Oh, I see. And you had five minutes to let loose. And you'd say, hello, my name is uh, Susan Douglas? Oh, they knew who, because you had right. to uh, ask for auditions, and you had to wait for auditions. And the... Uh, the, uh, the uh, NBC, ABC, and WOR, they were the big ones. So they gave an audition once every three months or something <coughs> for whatever director they assigned to it. And that's how I, we did the, the morning NBC and the afternoon ABC, and I was lucky. From then on, I never had to audition again. Right. But you did 109 which would have driven a lot of terrible. people from the field. Uh, <laughs> well, <coughs> uh, 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 I had another job to make a living. What was your other job? I was uh, at Saks Fifth Avenue selling in the, in the stocking department. But there were two of us for one. Jo Van Fleet, I don't know if you remember her, she was a wonderful actress, right. character actress. And she was mostly auditioning for theater. She wasn't interested in radio. And the two of us went to apply for one job with the understanding that one of us would always be there. But it gave right. the other one a chance in case there were auditions. And the big problem happened when they paid. They would only pay one. And we split it, Joe Van Fleet was getting the, the checks, the weekly checks, and we just split it. But at the end of about six months, her accountant, she was doing a lot more, said, you can't do this because you're going to have to declare all this money because you're getting paid, but you're only getting half of it. So we had to leave the job. <laughs>